The countdown is on. That means just three days away from Donald Trump becoming the first former president ever to be tried on felony charges. Donald Trump is being accused in the New York Supreme Court of falsifying business records as part of a scheme to conceal a hush money payment. Yeah, the uh, first kind of case in history, a former yes. president standing trial here. But one of the big questions is Trump, is he going to get a fair trial? From Judge Mershon, also, how will the jury selection process play out? Well, joining us now to break it all down is distinguished professor for Toro University, Thane Rosenbaum, an attorney for Lori and Kramer, Barack Lori. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thane, I'm going to start with you. You, uh, take us through this process of selecting this jury. Uh, we had Judge Napolitano on a little earlier today. He broke it down a little bit. Take it a step further for us. What's this going to look like? What does Trump's team do to pick these jurors here? Explain it. Well, Bob, you know, remember, Donald Trump is profoundly unpopular in New York State, especially in New York City. So his claim to say, can we just change the venue out of the city, that issue is still on appeal. And he will continue to make that argument. And if he loses... It will, it will be something he will use as a, even an additional appeal. There's going to be a lot of people. There are going to be a lot of bodies in that jury room. Uh, but there are also going to be a lot of, uh, you know, there are going to be a lot of objections to a number of them. The one thing that the judge said was the mere fact that all the jurors know about this case is not a reason. You know, Donald Trump's argument is, where can I go in New York City? Everyone here is prejudiced against me, not just this judge, any of the judges, too. So I think one argument is to say that there's going to be no permissible objection simply about knowing about the case. They're going to probe more deeply. Have you already made up your mind that Donald Trump violated federal campaign finance laws? Now, I don't know if any juror is going to admit to that, but I think most jurors will say, I know who Donald Trump is. I'm not particularly in love with the guy, but I know this case. Uh, but nobody is going to say that they're impartial. If you want to serve on this jury, mm. you're going to say, I have an open mind. Yeah, great points there, Thane. And, and Barack, uh, we know that um, President, former President Trump is, also had tried to get the trial moved. That was denied. We also know that this is the one trial that will take place before the election, uh, this very historic moment. Now, if Worst case scenario, the former president is convicted on all counts, so he could theoretically face more than a decade in prison. But most legal experts are saying that isn't likely, and he would still probably be free to campaign for president while his appeal was pending. So taking all of those details and, and, and things that people are tossing around, how do you see this playing out uh, in the trial, but also if the former president is convicted? Well, it's always very hard to predict how the, the judge will handle these things, how the, the diligence of the case will proceed. I, I do think that uh, at the end of the day, he, if he does get convicted, and there's a very high likelihood that he will, given the venue, and I want to talk about that in a moment, uh, that he will appeal, that he will not uh, be forced to go to, uh, to, to jail during that time. I do also have a major issue with regard to the legal aspect of this, because this is a case where they're trying to claim that this so-called hush money, and I never like to call it the hush money case, because it, it's already decided what the purpose of the money payment was when you say hush money. But uh, this is a case where they're trying to somehow shoehorn a, uh, a campaign finance violation uh, associated with something that otherwise would be a settlement agreement, and Michael Cohen was involved in all this. It's it's very convoluted, uh, and I think it's really a, an attempt just to, of course, um, narrow down and pigeonhole Trump into this box. One last thing I want to say about the um, about the venue issue, and, and Thane really brought up a very good point about this. I I think that you know we just saw that O.J. Simpson died recently, and if you if you recall when he was uh, with the venue for his case in the criminal matter, they bent over backwards to make sure that it was perceived to be a fair case, and they moved it to Los Angeles downtown because it was perceived that that would be more likely for a favorable jury for him. And sure enough, that was exactly the case. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that whatsoever with Trump, are we? It's, it's really a, a quite point. a dastardly situation. Yeah, very interesting points there. Well, yeah. unfortunately, gentlemen, we are out of time. Thane Rosenbaum, Barack, Lurie, we appreciate your analysis as always. Thank you. Have a great weekend.